So, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the United Devils. This is Arian and I am here to bring a deadline day report, review, maybe a transfer window review if you want to call it that. And it's it's bittersweet. I think I started the last video that was reporting on Anderson Cavani's arrival with the same words. It's a bit bittersweet. There are mixed emotions, uh, not only with myself, but I think with all fans involved with United. Because I think we were just expecting something different, you know. I think last season was testing. Um, we wanted to see what that group of players, with the additions obviously of Maguire, Juan Bissaka and Bruno Fernandes later in January can do. What their ceiling is. And we saw that with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at the helm. In a very testing year for him too. A, a year that was going to kind of define what will be his career at Manchester United, what will maybe he, his legacy as manager, you know, because if United go on to finish that season sixth or fifth and lose the semi-finals that they did, then Solskjaer might be on the outs because obviously he enjoyed a pretty poor end to his interim period in charge, you know, that half season he got. He got a full preseason in and got some business done. Not a lot, we probably expected more. But then it was to see what he can get out of those players that were there because obviously United have shifted some dead wood, but you can't shift everyone in one window. It's very difficult to do that, especially with some players that United had on some extortionate wages. It's just difficult. So by shifting some of the dead wood, bringing in some players that Solskjaer wanted, bringing up some players from the academy like Brandon Williams, Mason Greenwood, um, Solskjaer built somewhat a team that was his that lost some of that Jose Mourinho, David Moyes, Louis van Gaal identity, and it was just his. And he got that first full season in. He finished third. I think the bare minimum for it to be deemed a successful season for Solskjaer to have a future was to finish in the Champions League. But trophies would have been nice to get one. But the priority was to be back at the top, back in, you know, the prime time of football. And United did that. Solskjaer did that. United finished third obviously, um, automatic qualification. After chasing for pretty much the whole season, United were never really in the top four. And they got in there when it mattered and they stayed there. And credit to Solskjaer for getting that out of those players. Credit to Bruno for coming in and kind of transforming the team. So in one season, you saw that Solskjaer's recruitment plan was good. The players he was bringing in were helping. They made a difference. Maguire and Juan Bissaka made United the best defense in Europe. Bruno obviously helped change United going forward. Anthony Martial became a prolific goal scorer, etc. etc. Solskjaer was able to get it out of those players and finish in the Champions League spot. So then, going into the summer, you think well, we might not actually be that far away. United might actually be closer than than what we expect because obviously Liverpool suffered a little bit of a drop off after they won the league, which was to be expected. City dropped off a lot. That was a very poor title defense. Um, and then there was United, the best of the rest. So you thought Liverpool might drop off a little bit more uh, this season, whether they strengthen or not. They ended up strengthening, but as we saw against Aston Villa, it's a crazy season. They lost 7-2. Obviously United lost 6-1 on the same day. But it shows that they're only human. They're catchable. I think it's always easier to get to the top than stay there. So the consensus was that United aren't that far away. And with a few world-class pieces, maybe not a title charge, but maybe being within contention until maybe like February, maybe March, you know, showing progress, not being 30 points away. And it felt realistic. It felt with the links to Jaden Sancho, some links to Daya Upamecano, it felt like, you know, those are the kind of players that if United bring in, it's like, oh, we might be close. That just adds that depth. But most of all, it adds to the starting eleven that was already good. The the one that formed at the start of the, uh, at the end of last season, it was good. But it just needed to be better. And some of the players that were starting every game could be useful off the bench and in rotation and so forth. So going into the summer, obviously, Jadon Sancho was the priority. We knew all summer that he was going to be, he was priced at 108 million pounds 
no ifs, ands, or buts. United tried, or did they? Apparently they tried. They were relaxed the whole summer. They thought Dortmund would budge eventually. At the end, Sancho was even kind of protesting. He felt ill, even though he was fine to go back to England to party and go to England duty. So make of that of what you will after missing two Dortmund games. So clearly United wanted him, he wanted United, but United just didn't pull the trigger. And the downfall kind of started there. We got into the season with only one new signing in Donny van de Beek, which felt like it might be fine until deadline because the team was just very good. They, they, they finished the season strong despite losing in the Europa League semi-final. They finished off the league season strong. That's first 11. That strongest 11 was good, was solidified. It was kind of balanced. But we start the season losing to Crystal Palace, barely being Brighton, getting hammered by Tottenham Hotspur while winning twice in the Carabao Cup. And in the first international break, United are 16th with three points from three games. And then you think, okay, well, it's a slow start. It's not the end of the world. There is time. United know what we need. It felt like, you know, with Sancho, even at the end of last season, United might have won some trophies. But we know what we need. Solskjaer has told them what he wants. So there is still time to, to go and get it done. They didn't. United end the window acquiring Alex Telles, a left back from Porto, 27 year old, goal scoring, attacking, very positive. A good signing, but not quite what we needed, but an improvement in that position. Edinson Cavani, 32 year old, turns 33 in December. Um, a striker. A striker that played a handful of games last season and was pestered by injuries, claiming the number seven jersey that was seemingly kept for Sancho the whole summer. United were bringing, talking about new players. They brought in Van de Beek. Somebody in the squad could have taken that seven. For example, Greenwood, he took 11. It just felt inevitable that Sancho was going to be that player. Edison Cavani comes in at the deadline being a free agent not featuring for PSG at all after lockdown because his contract had obviously expired and he opted out he was injured so the bright side of that is that he's most definitely 100% fit right now he looks ready he was working out he seems keen which is good you know the mental side of things wanting to come to United not only for the money him and Teles seem like great signings um, when it comes to that you know the mentality is just as important as ability so this isn't saying that those aren't good signings. Those are signings that improve United in depth significantly. Um, Cavani is obviously an upgrade to Odio Negallo. He provides competition and motivation for Anthony Martial, as well as a tutelage, you know, for him, Greenwood, Rashford. That championship pedigree, World Cup pedigree, Champions League pedigree is, um, is a player with a lot of experience and a lot of goals under his belt. So he might be Falco 2.0, he might be Zlatan 2.0. We never know. It's on a one-year deal. It's not the end of the world. It's a good signing, even if it is just for depth. But it's just not enough. United went into this window needing a centre-back, it felt like. Needing a central midfielder, it felt like. And most definitely needing a right-winger, which was Sancho. We know it. The club knows it. Everyone else knows it. All of the media know it. United have been linked with him the whole summer. That was the talk of the summer. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. And United end the window addressing only one of those positions. Now, United have conceded three against Crystal Palace, two against Brighton, and six against Tottenham Hotspur in the league. The central defensive calamities that have been happening are worrying. Harry Maguire not looking good. Eric Bailly looking good against championship competition and against Tottenham, awful. Victor Lindelof looking very poor against Premier League competition, got dropped. Bayer didn't play any better, but it just looks like Lindelof is surplus to requirements either way. So what next? Axel Twenzebe should be back in training after the international break, but he has been MIA since November of last year. So the chances of him jumping right back into the first team action are just it, it, they're bleak it's going to be Maguire and fill in the blank Lindelof or Bailly starting Newcastle away after the international break and 
it's it's no surprise that fans maybe find it difficult to trust them because they haven't just shown what United have needed to see from that centre-back pairing that was arguably one of the best in Europe in all competitions last season. Aaron Juan Bissaka, very shy going forward, looks a little bit shaky, defending, just it just doesn't have that same swagger around him that you know when the guy is going at him 1v1, he will tackle him and it will be clean. Luke Shaw, there is a reason why United signed Alex Telles. Luke Shaw doesn't offer a lot going forward. He is very limited at defending. He sits too narrow. He's scared to get in the races. He doesn't really tackle that much defensively. He is suspect. Offensively, he's a liability. So Alex Telles, I think left back became a position that needed addressing during the window after the season started. And United went and addressed it. Fair play. But center back is still there. Center midfield, it's unbalanced at the moment. When the Manja Matic starts with Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes ahead of him, United are outrun in midfield. Um, it's it's unbalanced because Matic is the one that stays behind. And when United go forward and they're hit on the counter, Matic is the one that has to clean everything. And Matic is just too slow and not mobile and athletic enough to do that. So the midfield will have to be looked at. Obviously, Donny van de Beek came in. Um, a very good signing, a creative player that likes to get in between the lines. He likes to go forward, make runs. He has already scored a goal on his debut against Crystal Palace, that consolation goal. He's looked good in the game that he started. But Solskjaer obviously either doesn't trust him to start in the league yet or he just doesn't feel like he's better than the options that he currently has. But I think the game against Spurs showed that starting Pogba and Fernandez together with a Matic behind them in a big game might prove too costly. So... He will definitely have to reshuffle and, and take another look at the midfield. And then going forward, um, United had two strikers with Igalo and Martial. Cavani obviously comes in there now and backs up Martial probably. Martial obviously might now be suspended for three games after receiving that straight red against Spurs. Assuming that suspension is now returned and we won't see Martial for some very big games. So... Cavani will have time to hit the ground running. He will have time to to start, probably, and to, to win the fans over, even though I think the fans will support him. But it's just a bittersweet feeling to see him get the number seven shirt after the whole summer of thinking it's going to be Jadon Sancho. It's going to be that 20-year-old superstar that might be here for the next decade and be the face of that new era of United that we thought we were being sold last season as fans and even media that cover Manchester United. So... It's going to be bittersweet, but a few goals will make fans maybe not forget about Jadon Sancho, but definitely warm up to Cavani and the thought of him being at the club for maybe past that one year um, that he has initially signed for. Obviously, he has another year option. And then Mason Greenwood is isolated by himself on the right-hand side. He is by far the best option they'd have on the right. There's Juan Mata there, obviously, but in most games, he just lacks when it comes to agility and speed. There's Dan James, who he doesn't definitely doesn't lack in speed, but lacks in technique, awareness, football IQ. So Mason Greenwood, all in all, is the perfect package there, but he will be he will need to be rotated, and it remains to be seen how that how that happens with Solskjaer liking James on out on that right hand side. So we will see how he addresses that on the left. Obviously, there's Marcus Rashford. Dan James probably is the one is the go to to replace him on the left whenever there's rotation but Solskjaer doesn't like to rotate Rashford or Maguire they usually play 90 minutes in most competitions so it also remains to be seen how that's addressed obviously Jesse Lingard is still at the club and Facundo Pelestri uh, the Uruguayan 18 year old has also joined on deadline day he was the last announcement for 10 million euros he is an attacking player he is a winger the rumours, the reports are that he goes straight into the first team setup, uh, completely bypassing the academy in spite of being only 18. And most of the concerns from scouting reports are that he might find it difficult to adapt very quickly to the Premier League coming from the Uruguayan league, from Penarol, which is fair. Solskjaer addressing the signing has spoken of him as somebody that will probably go into the first team setup straight away, into that first team bubble. So... We will see how that goes, how long it takes for him to get integrated and when he gets his debut. But it seems like he will be getting his debut sooner rather than later. Solskjaer liking his pace and ability to beat the man. So perhaps he will be another option on that right-hand side. But again, it's um, 
it's an 18 year old it's an unexperienced 18 year old it's somebody who is a gamble it's not a, it's not a surefire right away improvement to the first team that i think we were all looking for and lastly there's the signing of Ahmad Traore from Atalanta the 18 year old for a fee of 17 million pounds initially that could rise up to 40 million pounds with add-ons he will join in January pending medical and work permit and he is the one that I think might be the most exciting out of the whole business that United have done this summer he is not an outright winger he has a goal in in his debut for Atalanta last season he's left footed very confident on the ball uh, creative and like I said, an out-and-out right winger, a position that United have been crying out for to strengthen for for years. That's what Sancho was coming in for. That's where Mason Greenwood is filling in right now. But Traore is also 18. He just turned 18 in July. And he will also likely come into the first team setup straight away when he joins in January when he obtains that work permit. But again, it's it, it just feels naive and... and overwhelming to throw those kind of expectations at Manchester United on the youngsters to to provide service straight away to be those you know players that are that have that cutting edge and x factor to win games for Manchester United but once again it's just it's the same old at Manchester United isn't it Um, a manager comes in the hopes start to elevate again after the expectations obviously have dropped dramatically since Sir Alex Ferguson's departure and then when it feels like there is a project in place, there is a direction, there is a vision that the club is going in, the board just continue to underinvest, to disappoint manager after manager, to a point where it feels like most managers' fates are sealed before they even get into their second season because Solskjaer done everything that was asked for him, everything that he could have done to prove that he is the man for the job and that he knows what he's doing and that he deserves to be trusted. And still, he wasn't trusted or so it seems he wasn't given his first choice targets um the club boasted their financial abilities and then refused to pay what was needed for somebody like Jaden Sancho for somebody who would probably be worth double what he was worth this summer next year after a good after another good season which feels like he will inevitably have so now we wait the window rating maybe a 5 out of 10, maybe a 6 out of 10. I guess we will be able to say more after we see Tellez and Cavani in action. Um, also more of Donny van de Beek. But it's just underwhelming. It's a little bit disappointing because it felt like we knew where we needed to address, what we needed to address, where we needed to improve in order to kind of start closing the gap on City and Liverpool. And we just didn't do that. We kind of ignored it. <laughs> Went a completely different route. And now... With three points from three games, sitting in 16th, going into a very busy and difficult period, starting with Newcastle away on October 17th. You know, I'd have a lot of questions to answer. Can Solskjaer dig the club out of the hole again? The team morale is very low right now after being on the end of a 6-1 thumping from Tottenham Hotspur. There are questions. How much longer does Solskjaer have? Apparently there have been contacts with Pochettino already. Results are needed. The club, ha- the team has to bounce back straight away. Newcastle away is going to be huge. It's going to answer a lot of questions. The body language, the commitment, the application, how the, the style, um, yeah, the determination. We're going to learn a lot in that game and in the games following, but it's, it, it feels like it's getting around to that time again where if a few more results after the international break don't go our way, it will be Sol- Solskjaer's head that will be on the chopping board and we will be starting this process all over again. New manager, new manager bounce improvement, hopes for the summer, disappointment, sacked and all over.